Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys in the view of us, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the release of the Orbital update for No Man's Sky, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about my thoughts and feelings on its release and how it has been staggered across platforms, but I'm not only that, I'm going to give you my final thoughts and feelings on the Orbital update and a review set of update. Right, so let's jump on over onto the Tinter webs. So, let's start on off on March the 27th, because this is when it all kicked off, and Sean of the Murrays and Hello Games pushed out the update to all platforms. Now, I get to why I'm saying it all platforms in a moment. But you can see here The Verge kicked off to say that, you know, it's finally getting Ship Editor in the latest update, which is something that the community has wanted for some time. Scrolling up a little bit further, again, it says the most requested feature at long last. Yes. Keep going. And here we go. We've even got Xbox Wire on March 27th saying the Orbital update for No Man's Sky available today builds upon the game, which was renamed largely unchanged since launch. Well, you can click into this Xbox Wire and scroll on down and you can sort of gauge the sort of frustration from the actual Xbox players three days later. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, uh, where's this update then, Xbox Wire? And look, it's, uh, there's actually been a note from the editor of Xbox Wire on March 29th, you know, a fair few days later. Hello Games is still in the process of getting No Man's Sky Orbital update available for gamers on Xbox. We expect this to arrive early next week. Well, it's a bank holiday weekend. And how do you expect it to arrive early next week? It's a bit of an oddity, to be fair, to be honest, people. Because when you go over to the Xbox sort of posts and all sorts of other stuff, it, it just doesn't sort of seem to chime true. Because look, Sean Murray put this out on March 27th. Xbox freaking chimed in yet again. Orbital, us describing our relationship to the couch until we are off work tonight. What? Why make jokes about not working? And Sean Murray replied with a little praise. Hmm. Where's the update then? <laughs> and the community goes on saying, you know, come on, Xbox, how about stop making jokes about freaking sitting on the couch and doing work and actually get and do some work and get the updates out, you know? Oh, there we go. You should better release this update instead of making jokes. Hmm. Well, well, we're waiting. Yeah, guys, where's the update? Where's the update? Where's the update? And that's all we've really been hearing throughout the actual community channels. And that even inside of my own comments, I've had quite a lot of people on Xbox saying that they're, they're pretty disinterested and disfranchised with everything that's going on right now. Because why? Why is it not out on Xbox? And why is it that Xbox is saying that it's down to Hello Games? Bit of a weird one, to be honest. So there we go. There's that post again there. Now, the reason why I thought Hello Games did actually push this out onto every single platform when they say that they pushed it out on every single platform is when you see Orbital Update and you can see all the different sorts of platforms that they've pushed it out to. They've put it out for Certificate and Go Live all at the same time for the Orbital Update, going by these like little tags. If you scroll up to here, you can see here that the actual patches themselves have only gone out to PC, PS4, PS5, which sort of segues into perhaps there's been a bit of a problem with it going over to all the ones that aren't there so xbox one xbox series x and s xbox game pass and nintendo switch they seem to have all been dropped off of this little sort of like mini sort of push out of patches that's because they didn't get the freaking update even though hello games i believe pushed it out otherwise you wouldn't see this whole repertoire of colored boxes there we have seen it in the past where these little colored boxes don't all appear there when they haven't pushed it out at the same time. Just like you can see here with these patches. Okay. So it's a bit of an oddity to be honest. And yeah, over on Xbox, they did say you know, last month, blah, 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 blah. They did say that it was all coming over on March 27th. No Man's Sky Orbital Update introduces space stations. This was published on March 27th, but then an editor added a note on the 29th to say that Hello Games is still in the process of getting No Man's Sky over. I don't honestly believe that, and we'll get to why I don't believe that in a moment. But you can see here, even the Xbox Orbital trailer dropped as well five days ago. And 
you're going to see a concurrent running theme here that if you pop down to the actual comments it's just going to be quite a lot of people saying hold on what the fudge has happened why are we not seeing this yeah i'm putting it down to maybe the console wars perhaps and all sorts of other stuff i don't know whether there is any sort of political slant on this i really don't i, I just think that there might be some sort of stuff happening when it comes to Okay, so when you do get an update on any platform and you fire it up when it's whether it's No Man's Sky or any other game, and if you get crashes and you're sending crash reports in to the actual platform, they must see all these blue screens and error messages and things like that for certain games. You know, No Man's Sky being one, but other games as well, where you see a bit of backlash, you see a little bit of community sort of like push back to say, hold on, this isn't right or something isn't right. I think then you might see some hesitancy from platforms such as Xbox and also perhaps Nintendo in pushing back to the developer saying, hold on, this isn't quite right, back over to you guys. And I'm wondering whether that's what's happened. Because it's not just No Man's Sky. Dragon's Dogma 2, one of the first big update patches to add new games on the title screen, you couldn't actually hit up a new game. So if you're in a game, that's it. You just got to run that game to death. You couldn't actually start a new game from fresh. They've just added that option in. They've also made it so when you go to in town, rather than only be able to buy it by one haircut card, and then you had to buy others using real game, real life currency, you can actually buy up to 99 haircut cards to change your appearance from a shop vendor with in-game currency. That update came out to PlayStation 4, well, PlayStation 5, sorry, and also PC, but it hasn't come to Xbox. Xbox has to wait. Now, admittedly scrolling down here, um, Capcom has actually said, Capcom says update to Xbox Series X and S are planned in the next few days. Though, so users of Microsoft consoles shouldn't have to wait too long. But it seems to be the same sort of wait time, a few days to a week, you know? And that seems to be the same sort of wait time that we're seeing across the verse, whether it's on No Man's Sky, whether it's on Dragon's Dogma. But then I also jumped in and I'd done some searches online to see if it's affected any other games. And I did come across this, Lies of P. Lies of P also was patched on PlayStation and PC, but then it took ages for that update to come over to Xbox with no real reason as to why that has actually happened, people inside the viewerverse. So, a bit of an oddity there. A bit of an oddity. So anyways, people, there's a, there's a lot of reasons why this could be, and at this point is where it trips over more into speculation-y type stuff. So over on my community tab, I've been trying to gauge your guys' feelings on all of this, and I've had some very odd pushback at times. I really have. Yeah, but anyway, let's, let's scroll on down. So anyway, I've been putting out about Dragon's Dogma 2 on all platforms. This was brought to my attention by James MC. Thank you, James MC. Thank you, yes. And that's where I found the Lies of Pi stuff as well. But yep, yeah, I've been putting out the latest from Xbox all the time too and trying to keep people informed. But at the same time, it's, it's been a real struggle because I know that a, quite a swathe of my audience is on. Xbox. I mean, I own an Xbox myself. I was playing Starfield on that. And that's another thing. A lot of people are saying, well, maybe it's because Starfield on Xbox is a competitor of No Man's Sky and they've only just pushed out new updates for you know, Starfield and they want to get a bit of traction on there rather than people being sucked over to Orbital. Now, I did even ask AI what's going on. And you can see there what AI actually came back with, which is plausible to a certain degree. You know, it depends on business strategy and all sorts of other stuff, communication and marketing and patch management, all sorts of stuff that they actually go into. But anyway, I think right now, people, I should really get into reviewing Orbital as an update. Was it actually good? Well, yes and no. Yes and no, people. Okay, so the Orbital update itself, people, it has brought so much more life and gravitas to the actual stations. The stations that we know and love are now stations that we're still exploring and understanding in the way that they are procedurally generated, the colours and patination that we might get. 
But I, what I would say is, although they say these are procedurally generated, the vendors are always in the same places. What they tend to have is tend similar to the same. And also, once you've been to a Gek station, you've been to a Viking station, you've been to a Korvac station, you've kind of seen the general layouts of all of them and where you're going to find maybe your little cubes for navigational data and all that sort of shenanigans. Um, the only thing that really seems to differ from station to station and system to system is the outside makeup and the coloration of the lights and the actual hues that you're going to find inside the stations and also the textures, whether they're rusted or not, that sort of stuff. But other than that, there's not too much in there, to be fair. And they have even lost their side rooms, so all the remembrance terminals, they're no longer inside of these newer stations. You can still find them in the abandoned stations, though, people. Heck yes, I even found an abandoned station that had remembrance station terminals on both sides, which was pretty lovely. But as far as this update, what did it actually bring in terms of playability, like comeback ability and playability? Well, it has brought in this whole new sort of guild faction-y type stuff where you get discounts and you even get given freebies and you can donate stuff to up your ranking with it. So the trade has been upped a little inside of there, people. It really has, which is a welcomed addition. But other than that, it hasn't brought in any new real missions to be running inside of these sort of stations and it hasn't brought any sort of new gameplay to higher tiered players like myself like legacy players i mean i've really got not much else to do maybe i might scrap a few ships and i might build a few custom ships the only problem with that is when you build a custom ship what you build i made a red explorer ship with glider wings that i loved i showed it to ricey he didn't see it in red. It showed up as blue to Ricey. What he saw and what I made, completely different things. So that automatically killed ship creation and customization, customization to me. What's the point in making a custom ship if players can't actually see what you've created inside of the multiplayer verse? Another thing that it brought in was being able to locate trade surges out in the actual universe. I've used my trade surge and what it done is it made everything like minus, like, like a a profit sort of margin a massive profit margin if i buy it i'm buying it at a massive discount and it lasts for about two and a half hours now it told me that one specific system had this trade surge but then i went to other systems and they all had the same trade surge so i was buying stuff from this place that said that it it was discounted taking it to another station just to find that the same discounts were running there as well it either feels broken or I'm not fully understanding how this new mechanic works inside of game people. So that for me feels a little bit buggy, a little bit off somewhat, people inside the view of us. Sound up in the comments, let us know if you've tried it and whether you think it's buggy or whether it's working as it should, as per design. And I'm just misunderstanding exactly how I can benefit from this trade surge. I've yet to make a profit. In actual, when you do your trade surge, it says how much profit you've made. I can't find where to sell it for a profit. Just no idea. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that I feel might be broken or it might be my stupidity, one or the other. The coloration of, of, the, sh of the custom ships is definitely broken. So that's broken. And also, the new element of sending out frigates and they might hit you up with a message. Even though I was getting little messages coming back from my frigate commanders and then flying out to my frigates, I didn't see much happening. I was flying around in space and then it popped up on my actual screen of my ship. I got a hollow projection of my uh, fleet captain and he was asking me to help sort out some sort of dispute or something. Basically, there was things moving around on their own. They went to a certain galaxy and it was almost like they picked up poltergeists on their ship. And they just asked me for my advice. Do they ignore it or do they press on? I said, press on and investigate. That's what I said. But I didn't actually have to go there or help them, like it said in the patch notes. It was more just of a, a text sort of thing. A little bit like what you get at your actual settlements. And so far, that's all I've seen. Now, at settlements, you can get called there if you get attacked by sentinels or pirates. And I'm imagining it's going to be the same thing. If your fleet comes under attack, you might get called in to actually fend them off. But so far, everything that I've experienced has been very text-based. And from the actual um, the previous update of Mega, I've still yet to come across an NPC on planet inside of one of these outposts that gives you one of these new missions. I've been to loads of outposts and not had any luck in finding any of these new missions inside of game. 
So maybe it's just me missing the mark. Maybe it's not me fully understanding the patch notes, or maybe it's the patch notes being a little bit vague in the way that they're made up. But anyway, this orbital update, I think if you're into ship hunting and you're into ship building, this update is going to score rather highly. But for me, because I've got 12 ships and I've had to scrap a ship just to try the ship customization, I would have liked it a lot more if Hello Games gave us a load more slots. Or, or made it so we could still scrap ships, even if we've got a full repertoire of ships, then that would have been that would have been so bad. But currently, I it felt like I had to take a step back to enjoy some of these new elements. And for me, I don't think there's anything that's got me to come back and play. There's nothing to say, go on, Captain, jump back in. You've got end game stuff to do. There's still way too much at the start of the game, way too much at the middle of the game where it feels overwhelming. And then for us guys that have been playing for freaking years, it still feels like the end to No Man's Sky is rather lackluster. And I'm really hoping this year does deliver for legacy players and end game content because everything seems to be around the end of the Atlas path. And now the Atlas legacy path and this big decision that can be made to align with the Atlantid but I just think that Hello Games have cut this update up over the year and they've given it in pieces rather than one big shebang and I kind of feel that my review of this is going to be reflected in the way that I score it now although that is bringing ship customization it, it gave us three types of ship not every type of ship as yet and again I think that they're holding back because in the trailer you could clearly see a shuttle in the background if you look at the holograms you'll see a shuttle um, so yeah, anyways, I kind of feel that my review of this, I'm going to still score it quite highly because I love the new stations. I love the gravitas the new stations bring. I like the fact that ship customization has been put in, shoehorned in, at a very early sort of version of ship customization in comparison to the likes of, say, Starfield and other games where you get to build ships. So for me, Orbital is a pretty good update. When you compare it to updates, on previous Februarys, we've had Companions, we've had Sentinel, and we've also had Outlaws. I would say this is on par, if not bigger than Outlaws. And when Shaun of the Murray said that this year was going to be a big year, I see this as quite a big update. Even though it hasn't really delivered anything for me, when it comes to new players in earning sort of like reputation, getting stuff for free from the Guild Agent, and making use of trade surges, if I can work out how they freaking work, I think this could be quite a good update. And the fact that you can now actually scrap ships on the fly, put this with the pirate update with smuggling, you could just become like a pirate sc ship scrapper, which is pretty cool. It's like a little mini side hustle, isn't it? So I would say this update for new players is freaking phenomenal. And if I was a new player rating this, I'd be hitting this up as a 9. A 9 out of 10. Easy peasy, all day long. But for me, because it didn't really deliver any new lore, it hasn't really delivered anything for end game players. Um, it's, it's introduced a little bit more with the old frigate commands and bringing you closer to your frigate fleet, which is, is very welcome. I'm going to be scoring this more of about an 8.1. Yeah, just, just ticking over an 8 out of 10, which is still a bloody good score, to be honest. Sound up in the comments. Let us know what you think. Until next time, people. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.